Hi, my name is McGann, and today I want to talk to you guys about trying to get over emotional addiction. I've talked about emotional addiction before and trauma bonding in general, but it can be a very crazy feeling that just takes a stranglehold of you and you just feel like you're not going to survive it, but you will. And I'm going to try and help talk you through it. Now, if you're new here, I am not a medical professional by any stretch of the imagination. I have just been around narcissists since I was born, so I know their tricks, I know how they act, I know what they do, I understand the terminology when I see it, and I want to help you break free from the narcissist in your life. For myself, I am actually in the process of healing from an emotional addiction right now, and if you find that you're in the same boat as me, please, 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 no matter what impulses you feel, do not contact that person. The feeling of craving their attention, their feedback, them acknowledging you, it will pass eventually. So just keep yourself busy and if you don't know what to do, try doing something for someone else. If you do end up making contact with this person that you feel emotionally addicted to, one of two things are going to happen. Scenario one, you contact that narcissist and he or she will go, ha 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 ha, they're still on the hook, so I can keep abusing them as I please. Maybe I'll respond now or maybe I'll respond six months from now, but they're going to keep putting up with me either way. They just told me, tee hee hee. Or scenario number two, they're going to use whatever you say to them as part of a smear campaign against you. So if your narcissist is a guy and you reach out to him like, hey, I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. Will you please talk to me? They're going to take that message and go, oh my God, new girl that I'm seeing. Look how obsessed my last girl is with me. I don't even like her. We barely ever even spoke to each other. She's crazy. And then a lot of times the narcissist will still go back and also use options one to contact you down the road once the heat with their new honey has cooled down. So when the new girl starts to get boring and they can't find anybody else to put up with their crap, they will come right back for you because you told them they could. I will say I have lived around people who have major mood disorders since birth and there has never been a time where I regretted just keeping my mouth shut. I've even tried to write out long emails to explain my feelings so that way they can't, you know, argue or fight and, and they surely will understand if it's all clearly written down, right? No, anything that you say just gets twisted up and used against you. So if writing everything out or typing it out helps you feel better and it helps you to process the situation, that's fine, do that. But do not send it to the person, especially if you're feeling addicted to them. And honestly, when you are dealing with people with mood disorders like narcissists, the best revenge is a happy life without them. So let yourself sit with that pain because they did hurt you, acknowledge that, and you might even need to grieve this future that you thought you were going to have with this person. Person, but don't let that be the rest of your life. Use the experience to date more wisely in the future, but definitely keep dating until you find a person who makes sense with their actions, not one who keeps lying with their worthless words. It's also okay to acknowledge that you felt like you love that person, even if on other levels you know you didn't or you know that they were bad for you. It is okay if you love somebody who mistreated you or discarded you. That's on them. That's not on you. And also make yourself embrace that you're going to love this person in a healthy way. Don't let your feelings turn you into some kind of obsessive stalker because that just feeds the ego of a narcissist. You really have to love him or her enough to let them go. It's hard, but you really have to admit to yourself that you just weren't the right person for them because maybe nobody is. And just love that person who hurt you enough to let them be out in the world without you hating them. I love that Drew Barrymore movie, Ever After, when it gets to the end and she gets to confront her evil stepmother and she's like, I will never think of you again, but you will spend the rest of your life thinking about me every day. Let that be your narcissist. Move on. Be happy. Live that life that you thought you were going to have with them with somebody who's actually willing to do that work. But do not let the narcissist monopolize your entire life by putting you in the ringer over and over again with idealized devalue discard. Idealized devalue discard. After somebody has thrown you aside once, they've already shown you that they're not willing to do the hard work. They're not willing to fight for you. They're not willing to do whatever it takes. And just accept that and say, well, then this isn't meant to be and go find the person you are supposed to be with. 
And keep in mind, if you do find yourself stuck in the cycle of, well, he dumped me, now he wants me back. Now he doesn't like me. Now he dumped me. Now he wants me back. Now he doesn't seem to like me. Now he dumped me. Now he wants me back. Believe me, I've been there. Been doing this dance with my own husband for 15 years before finally being like, hey, you know what? You're cheating on me and blaming me for it. So I I'm done. I don't want to play with you anymore. And all that did was make him turn up the charm and put on his best mask and throw a bunch of money and gifts and love and affection at me and try and suck me right back in. But it only took about two months before he was right back to doing the same crap again. So keep in mind that when you're with a narcissist, they are never gonna change. They will cry and whine and beg and plead and make you all of the empty promises in the world, but they will deliver on almost nothing. As soon as they think they have their hooks back into you, they're gonna go right back to not caring about you. And that's abusive and that is not okay. A narcissist is never going to understand that what they do to other people is wrong because they don't see other people like people, they're tools. So a girlfriend to a narcissist is no more than a tissue to blow their nose with. And once they've used the tissue, they throw it in the trash and get out a new tissue. That's just who they are. And there's a really high probability that once you actually get away from the narcissist, they're gonna go on social media and start parading their new guy or girl all over the place. And they're not doing that because they're actually so head over heels for this new person. They're one, trying to trauma bomb the new person by love bombing them with all this attention and affection and public displays of look how much I love you. And two, they have a good idea that you're probably Facebook or cyber stalking them and you're gonna see it and that's gonna hurt you, which makes you more malleable to be hoovered back up into the idealized value discard cycle all over again. Look, baby, I really changed. Look how good I'm treating this girl when I was treating you like trash. That's what they do. That's how they keep a whole harem of women. And it makes you feel so bad when they do that. Like, wow, they already moved on like a week later. I feel like I meant nothing to this person. But seriously, I mean this so genuinely, feel bad for the new girl that he's parading around. Because think about it, when you were the new girl in the relationship with him and he was trying to love bomb you and condition you to serve his needs, wasn't he super nice and great and sweet and doing all this stuff with you then? Well, that's what he's doing with the new girl too. I mean, this new lady thinks that she just found this diamond laying in the grass and how lucky is she? But really, it's just a dog turd with gold spray paint on it. The new girl is being idealized right now. That's not gonna last. That's exhausting for a narcissist. So pretty soon, she's gonna start getting devalued and then discarded and then sucked back in with more idealization. So she will be in that drier cycle of doom before long. Feel bad for her. Also, I have to tell you from experience, do not try to reach out to the new guy or the new girl because that will also be turned into a smear campaign against you. Chances are by the time the narcissist has gone public with their new flame, that new flame is already feeling all these pangs of love from, you know, getting manipulated. So they're going to take whatever you tell them, no matter how true it is, no matter how many receipts you stack, and they're going to take it straight to the narcissist and say, oh, please explain this. Please say this isn't so. Please tell me she's crazy. And of course, that's what the narcissist is going to do. The narcissist is going to spin the new girl in circles and convince her that you're nuts. And in a way, if you're going through emotional addiction withdrawal, you, you kind of are. Because once you've been through all of these emotional highs and lows and you feel really bonded and attached and in love with somebody, getting cut off from that cold turkey, it, it feels horrible. You go into withdrawal like an addict. So just remember, if you get the impulse to contact your narcissist or their new person, that's part of the addiction withdrawal process and it will pass. Not to mention, even if you're trying to rescue the new person, you can't save somebody who is not ready to leave. So just mind your own business and live your own life because that's all you can do.